Hello everybody and welcome to yet another edition of ANM in Adda and we have today a very senior diplomat from the beautiful country as well as the continent of Australia. <sighs> a country in the news and of course the whole world is in the news at this moment. So we welcome Mr. Andrew Ford. Thank you uh, very much. Thank Australia you. and Kolkata. Well, welcome to the consulate. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. And it's a beautifully done up uh, office and a beautifully done up consulate here in Kolkata. Yeah, no, we're very happy, pleased with this. We've been, um, we've been here for one year uh, in Kolkata, but now we've only just moved into our, our new office here. And um, here we are able to conduct an interview in the conference room. <laughs> Great. Welcome to India. Welcome to Kolkata. Thank you very and, much. Uh, Australia has always been one of our very, very favourite, be it cricket, be it football, be it soccer, be it whatever. Because, uh, I don't know, for some reason India, Australia has a very uh, native connect. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So, now uh, you had the bushfire, then you have the corona. So, what actually is happening? What really is happening? <laughs> Well, the, as you said, we've had bushfire and corona. I, there's no link of <laughs> between those two things. But I think it, it is a, it, it's a challenging time for all of us in the world at the moment. I mean, yes, we had, it was a challenging time in Australia during the bushfires. We do have fires uh, m almost every summer in Australia, but these fires were, uh, they were more widespread than we were used to uh, and more challenging for us. Uh, and large parts of the Australian bushland were impacted by the fires, which of course had a major impact on, uh, well, people's lives were lost, homes were destroyed, but also um, had a major impact on tourism and, and the economy. Uh, and now, of course, with the global situation with coronavirus or COVID-19, uh, we are in a situation where it's like a, a further blow, I guess, to some of these uh, industries and some people in Australia. Um, so, it, look, it is a challenging time, but uh, Australians, like, like uh, Indian people, we're very resilient uh, and resourceful, and I'm sure that we will come through this time. Certainly, after the bushfires, we're in a rebuilding phase, uh, and, uh, and many of the, the towns uh, that were affected were slowly getting back on their feet. Certainly, we'd moved past the, uh, the dangers the response phase into the rebuilding phase but um, I think now um, with this uh, added added uh, challenges around COVID-19 um, people are needing to sort of uh, there's, there's a whole different approach that's required now. Which part of Australia do you come from? So I was um, I, I grew up in Melbourne which is in um, I think you would know the state of Victoria uh, and the home of the Melbourne Cricket Ground where I've spent many a happy day um, but also, uh, but I, when I was when I finished my university in Melbourne, I moved to Canberra, which is the capital, and I joined the federal government there. So, my home has been in Canberra ever since then. But of course, uh, as a diplomat, I've also had the uh, the joy and experience of living in a number of different countries overseas as well. So, not just in Australia, not just in Canberra, but also overseas. What what is the, what the situation in Melbourne at the moment? Is MCG uh, is, uh, is cricket uh, still on MCG? Are you playing? Or is in the lockdown stage? So this is we're out of the Australian cricket season now. We play our cricket in the um, Southern Hemisphere summer, so our cricket season is just finishing at the moment, and we're about to move to our winter sports. Um, so the MCG is very famous for Australian rules football. AFL, as it might be known in some parts of the world. Uh, and so that season uh, was due to start this Thursday, uh, but the, there's some decisions that are currently being made um, as a result of the coronavirus situation about whether that season will start on time this week or not. So the MCG, unfortunately, of course, as in many um, uh, situations, if the sport does get underway, it will be to an empty stadium. And you can imagine, in a stadium the size of the MCG with 100,000 people, it's going to, we will hold 100,000 people with only a small number there, it will seem um, very empty. Um, but, but I think, you know, these are unusual times. And we, absolutely. Yeah. In Melbourne, how are people uh, waking up to this uh, corona? How are they kind of shielding themselves? So we've got an Australia-wide approach at the moment. Uh, and like many countries, it involves a, a number of different things. The first 
uh, one, well, first of all, I guess it starts with the individual, with personal hygiene. Um, we've all been told the importance of, of washing our hands, um, and, and, and also we're now um, increasingly moving to what we call social distancing. So, you know, sitting about as far apart as we all are now is, is, is what we're all required to do, so that we are... So what we're, the stage that Australia is at, at at the moment is that we've had more than 350 cases across the country uh, and around five deaths uh, at the last count that I heard. Uh, and so we're very, it's very important, these coming weeks are very important to try and uh, stop the spread of the illness. So uh, people are being asked um, that if they have returned from overseas in the last two weeks, or if they've come in contact with someone who is a known uh, positive case of COVID-19, that they should self-isolate at home for two weeks. Uh, so that uh, so many people in Australia are doing that, practicing self-isolation, which means they're staying in their homes or hotels. Uh, similar to India, we've also re increased uh, restriction, uh, uh, restrictions on our travel. So uh, we uh, we've now urged all Australians to reconsider their need for travel to anywhere in the world, um, and we're also uh, asking that anyone arriving from overseas they need to self quarantine for 14 days before going to the community. So these measures are uh, aimed at slowing the uh, spread of COVID-19, and. Uh, I guess you know we all know the reasons behind that. First of all, we want to avoid the more vulnerable members of society being um, affected by this illness and facing uh, serious illness or, or even the possibility of death. But also, um, we want to try and um, reduce the stress and strain on our uh, hospitals and our medical staff because if we have, if there's a large spike in people having to go for hospital treatment, um, that's going to put a lot of pressure. So I think this is why all countries are now looking to adopt measures such as these. Indian government is also adopting measures similar nature to, to this. You've restricted entry into restaurants and pubs and schools and colleges, all these measures are also... In uh, slightly different at this stage, but th these measures are all being um, reviewed uh, on a almost daily basis at the moment, but the most recent set of measures announced in Australia were restrictions on large, pu larger public gatherings of, of over 500 people, encouraging people to um, work from home if they could and those sort of measures. But uh, we haven't yet moved to the uh, steps uh, in Delhi where people are, where um, shopping centres and, and restaurants are being closed, but I'm sure those measures would be being considered at least at this time. In Australia, is it spread all over the uh, country or is it restricted to a particular country? No, it has spread all over the country and um, I think one of the things is Australians, uh, well, like Indians, are, are travellers and so many people uh, have, have travelled uh, and, and now we're also getting um, cross-community infection as well. So uh, each state and territory of Australia has now been impacted. I guess there's some rural areas that haven't been impacted yet. Um, but certainly the major centres have been impacted. Has it really hit the travel, the economy and the tourism industry very hard in Australia? Because you are promoting Tourism Australia in a big way and a whole lot of travellers and tourists were going towards Australia. Australia is a very favourite destination for yes. tourists. So this is going to impact your... Uh, it is. It is going to impact um, the tourism sector in Australia and in other countries. Uh, and you know, as I mentioned earlier about the bushfires, it's uh, for some tourism op operators it will be a um, double blow because people who may not have been able to go get to some areas because of they were affected by bushfires now there's this additional impact. Of course, Australians can still travel within Australia at the moment. Uh, that may change, I guess. Um, but there is no doubt that globally, not just in Australia, this will impact on the tourism sector, the services sector, restaurants uh, and uh, hotels and things like that. And I think we're, we're already seeing that impact. And how do you see the economy? I mean, the global economy has taken a hit. Yes. So what is the status of the economy, not only from the Australian point of view, from the global point of view, how do you look at the economy? How long, will it, how long do you think it will take to bounce back? That, look, these are questions that I don't, I think, uh, I don't have a crystal ball and I don't know how long it's going to take. I think um, uh, 
it really will depend on how how soon we can um, over as a as a world globe, not just as individual countries, can um, get the virus back into check and um, can start easing some of these restrictions. But at the moment, I think the whole focus needs to be on um, public health and safety, and and this will involve some restrictions that will have economic impacts. There's no doubt that already are having economic impacts. Uh, and so, uh, but only time will tell um, ha ha what the nature of those impacts will be. But there is no doubt, I'm sure, that there will be impacts. This is an absolute unknown commodity, this uh, virus. Yes. And uh, so far, as we understand, there are no vaccines or nothing has been invented. Or people have other talks mm -hmm. around, like Israel has invented something, they talk about it, China has come up with something, and they are offering other countries some, some kind of, you know, they are. Share their share their experience. Yes. So is Australia like taking help of from other countries, or is there any kind of vaccine, any kind of preventive care? You mean in oh, well, and first of all, in developing a vaccine, yes, we do not have a vaccine globally, um, and uh, I, there would be. There, I'm I'm aware that there are researchers in Australia uh, who would be working. I'm sure in cooperation with colleagues across the world to try and. Um, come up with a vaccine. This is not something that uh, each country would need to be preparing in isolation. It's important that uh, uh, that we that we together come up with, a, with something to address this. So uh, Australia has some very good scientific research researchers and they will, I know that there are, there are people in various research institutes working on trying to develop this vaccine. And certainly we can benefit from the uh, you know, from the unfortunate experience that China and, and now some of the other countries are having with the virus, that we are there are now some results that are coming through that are providing some early, um, I guess, information on on uh, for researchers to try and develop a response, um, both in terms of vaccine, but also uh, in terms of how to try and um, prevent this virus spreading. So this is why some of the measures that our countries are ad adopting are based on uh, experience of seeing of how the virus is unfolding. Right. So a lot of Indian students study in Australia yes. and many of them are still there in Australia. So what's your advice to them? What's your advice to the parents in India and parents in Kolkata in particular, parents in West Bengal in particular, whose children are studying in Australia at the moment? Well, the I know that, for the, yes, you're right. We, um, this has been one of the exciting trends in the Australian-India relationship in the last uh, year, recent years has been the increasing number of Indian students studying in Australia and they're now the second largest international cohort, 115,000 Indian students studying in Australia, which I think is fantastic. Uh, and that number has been growing. Uh, so what I would say is that is for parents of Indian students who are now in Australia um, is is to not worry about their children. Of course, it would be natural to worry about your children, but I know uh, many of the universities are now beginning to move towards uh, online classes. Um, and so uh, I'm sure your, the students will be uh, taken care of uh, through their university courses. They Can will they continue to study. Uh, I think in terms of coming back, of course, that's always an individual choice that people need to make based on the travel restrictions that are in place in both countries and in terms of their study. There's no provision for students to work online in India um, on an Australian course at the moment. I think well, that requires some agreements that uh, haven't yet been reached, but uh, we certainly, uh, it, it would be an individual choice if students wanted to uh, come back to their home country. So for the moment, they are safe in Australia as they are well taken care of and uh, absolutely quarantined if they have uh, contacted the corona or else they are absolutely fit and fine in Australia. No need to worry for the parents. Who I, I, think, I think the main thing to think about from the parents' point of view is that at the moment, uh, the, the advice from health authorities is it's better to, uh, to try and minimise international travel unless it's essential. So if these are students who are studying in Australia, who have enrolled in a course, um, I think they need to uh, try and work with the local situation, whether those courses are now being most likely taught online in many cases that they will, uh, that they move to that approach rather than um, uh, returning 
home um, um, in a, unless unnecessarily. Of course, that's an, it's an individual choice uh, for what students want to do, but but at the moment, uh, essential travel uh, is the only, and I think the definition of essential is is quite narrow, really. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Now we have had a lot of uh, queries coming in from uh, basically tour operators. And my colleague Manisha Mandur has been handling the tourism yes. in that sector, yes. stating that uh, when with these visa regulations or visa, and when the tourism, because tourism Australia, as I mentioned, was very popular this thing. Yes. So she has a couple of questions about sure. this tourism aspect. Okay. So, so uh, I mean, how badly it is hit by this epidemic? By the epidemic? Well, it's. Right. It's. I think the, the it's uh, what's what's been impacted is, as I was saying, is that it's now uh, when tourists travel to Australia, they need to self quarantine for two weeks. <laughs> so I, I can just give you a personal example. I was actually planning um, a return to Australia for a holiday to catch up with family next month, but I. For, but it's now less attractive to do so because. I would go to Australia and, and have to stay in one location in one room uh, or house for two weeks and uh, and so I've decided to postpone my travel and I'm sure many people will be making similar sorts of decisions at this time just because it, for, for public health and safety as I say that it's more important to be concerned about public health and safety at this stage than travel. Uh, business sector, for business sector it is going towards isolation. Yes. So, what are the main sectors which is right now not hit by this thing? I, I, th I think I mentioned earlier, I think that the, the main sectors will be um, in the services sector, because in services is where you know, is tourism, uh, it's uh, hospitality, it's uh, uh, restaurants and those sort of things. So, because people are now choosing, to, either choosing to stay away or in some cases there are restrictions on those places operating, this is going to naturally, I'm talking globally here, not necessarily just Australia, this is where it's going to have the greatest impact in the services sector. Um, uh, so that, uh, I think we're all grappling, uh, our governments are all grappling with how they deal with this, this sort of issue um, and where, whether employers can be flexible. Some people in these sectors are, are working on, um, on maybe casual employment arrangements, so this might make it more difficult. Uh, so there, there, there will be, there's definitely challenges for governments dealing with these, these sectors. And what is the scenario for India-Australia business, I mean your zone, which is Eastern India and Australia? So I think if you want to look at the, um, looking at that from a, a bigger picture, pic rather than just focusing purely on coronavirus, I think, uh, I think that the, it's a very good prospect. The India relationship, Australia relationship, is is really at a peak in many ways. Things are uh, our trade has been growing at 15% a year uh, for the last five years. Uh, India is now Australia's fifth largest trading partner. Um, the number of Australia India is the fa our fastest growing tourism market with around 400,000 Indian tourists visiting Australia last year. Um, so, and that's growing, that's last year, I mean, okay. on projections it was predicted to grow, of course, uh, the latest coronavirus may have an impact on those numbers, I expect. But, uh, so, w the relationship is going very strongly, and this is one of the reasons why we set up a post here in Kolkata, because uh, Australia has had a uh, mission in Delhi, of course, since independence. Um, we have consulates in Mumbai and Chennai, but not, we hadn't had anything in the east and northeast of India um, uh, for 40 years now. And so uh, we felt that because of the importance of India to Australia, uh, it was time to set up a consulate here. This also reflected a study that Australia did uh, a couple of years ago. It was an independent study commissioned by the government, done by a former very senior diplomat. Uh, and it found that there was no market more important economically to Australia in the next 15 years than India. So that's, uh, and as part of uh, that finding, it gave a strategy for how we in Australia need to approach the Indian market. And that strategy base is based around 10 key states and 10 key sectors. Uh, and so uh, we, are, we are now encouraging Australian companies when they look to India 
to think about India as not just one big massive country of 1.3 million people, but, but also as a group of states that often have very different characteristics to each other, different languages, different ways of, of operating. Uh, and so to try and help people to not be sort of daunted by this massive market, but to also see the opportunities that come from focusing down. So, so the government has a very firm strategy on how we're approaching India, uh, as economically, but also uh, strategically, and setting up here in Kolkata was a very important part of that. So how you are trying to, I mean, are you planning to overcome this situation later on through business or the travel sector? Uh, well, you mean overcome the corona? I think coronavirus you need to look at as primarily a, at this stage a health and safety, um, health and welfare uh, issue, but of course with economic impacts. But I'm looking from a longer term perspective at what the opportunities that India holds for Australia, and I think those opportunities uh, will remain beyond um, the current crisis that we're dealing with. And I think that's we need to have that long term perspective, and that's why this. This study looked out to the year 2035. So often in government circles, we tend not to look at beyond about three to five years in our planning. But this uh, this is uh, this is quite ambitious, looking out to the next 15 to 20 years at what uh, India has to offer. So, and I think if we look at it from that perspective, the India-Australia relationship has uh, is strong and has the potential to be even stronger. So I just. Thank you, Manisha. Uh, another very interesting aspect which is cropping up in my mind is when can you have India-Australia match at MCG or the Eden Gardens? When? <laughs> yes, well, um, I don't think there's been any change to the schedules at the moment, but of course, we would all love to see that. We would all love to see that, but, but uh, you know, again, we have to put the help. The, the, uh, the, the, the current crisis, we have to get through that. Yes, absolutely. And do you recommend uh, the Great Barrier Reef, I mean that area, I mean yeah. people are very, uh, absolutely they are, they go bonkers about Great Barrier Reef, yes. that is something very popular yes. among tourists here in this part of the world. Yeah. So that area is not affected I suppose, I mean from what we have heard. From the bushfires, certainly uh, not. And, um, corona. and uh, well, I, I don't know that the reef itself <laughs> could be affected by coronavirus as you know. But the the area surrounding that. Uh, oh, you mean as tourist-wise? Tourist. Yeah, I'm not aware of the of of many cases in that part of Queensland. But yeah, yeah. Queensland is largely being unaffected. That's what we heard. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I think Queensland. I haven't. I I I haven't looked at the breakdown by state um, for a couple of days. But uh, but as I as I say though, you know the. The travel restrictions apply to the whole of Australia. Yes, absolutely. So, when do you expect this restriction to? I mean, how long? I mean, in your perspective, in your point well, I think you know. Again, it's uh, you're asking the impossible question <laughs> that we'd all love an answer to. Um, uh, currently, the restrictions are, are for a month until mid-April, mid but, but I'm sure they will be reviewed as, yeah, as we get close to that date. So, and I think India's current restrictions are also around mid-April as well, but. Um, and that's based on uh, some experience in some countries where we're reaching a quite a critical stage in terms of the number of cases in the country and trying to stop that exponential growth. So your new cases have come down at the moment in Australia? No, uh, there, there was quite a, uh, there has been, uh, um, they are still increasing over the last few days. So, so we, ha we haven't yet, to s the, s the, the curve is still going up. So we all hope that uh, things will rationalize, yes, <laughs> stabilize yeah. as quickly as possible because it's something somewhere that uh, we are not really prepared for. Nobody in the world was prepared for. No. And we are all moving in a very smooth direction. They'll be well all around and suddenly something hit us. Yeah. But then India-Australia relationship is definitely going to go on strength to strength and will go forward. And then once again, Watch the new Australia match being done. And then also be great. <laughs> I'd love to sit and watch the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks for being with us today. Thank and you very much. And sharing a lot of things about Australia. And basically, what is more reassuring is the fact that students who are there, because we've got a lot of calls from the parents of so yeah. students whose so children yeah. are studying in Australia. Uh, it's very reassuring to know that they are all safe, and the Australian government has put in all measures 
to take care of them. I think it's important that, like like all people in Australia at the moment, they just continue to follow the the uh, advice of local authorities, and uh, and if they continue to do that, that will um, help protect them from um, from the virus. And any any uh, people who have gone to work there, anybody stuck there, according to your information, anybody stuck in Australia at the moment, from, anybody from India who's gone to work? Or? I haven't heard, but uh, I'm sure there are people who uh, who may want to leave um, and come back to India, like there would be some Australian people in India at the moment who might want to try and get back. And uh, I guess if they do, they just need to follow the, again. Yeah. The travel, the, the, the travel restrictions are in place, the and, and there's nothing actually. Uh, uh, there's no. There's nothing prohibiting people travelling between our two countries. They just need to, in the case of when they arrive in Australia, self quarantining. And I think in India, there's also some some restrictions that are in place for people arriving here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much Good for being with us. And that that was Mr. Andy Ford, and that was very very reassuring thoughts that he shared with us and also about the perspective of things in Australia at the moment, vis-a-vis the whole world and also in India. Abhijit Nandi Milinda with Manisha Mondol, YNN News from the Australian consulate in Kolkata. So keep watching YNN News and keep watching YNN Mwadda. We'll be back next week with another version of YNN Mwadda. Thank you.